Well, hello and welcome to this power supply review for the awesome unit, a well system for ongoing maintenance. The aim is to look at the solar cells that supply the power and the power consumption of the various modules and to determine the best way to supply the voltages and the currents that these modules require. Well, this is the circuit diagram of the awesome unit. It looks at the uh, the batteries, the uh, current design batteries, the 4.8 volt nickel metal hydride batteries, can't use lithium, um, and the two 6 volt solar cells, 600 milliwatt uh, each, supplying a small 100 milliamp 5 volt regulator for the Arduinos, and the 4.1 volt boost buck regulator module from eBay which supplies the power hungry and uh, uh, quite erratic SIM 800 unit texting unit. That unit takes a couple of amps uh, for several hundred milliseconds, uh, just a few hundred milliseconds after it has been turned on and then it settles down to a, a manageable um, hundred or so milliamps thereafter. Everything else is relatively small amounts of power but let's go through it piece by piece. Okay, the two solar cells are 60 millimeters by uh, 90 millimeters and are both rated at 100 milliamps each. That's in bright sharp shadowed sun. In Tanzania I should imagine the sun is a little bit brighter than it is in UK, it's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more ultraviolet which obviously drives the output voltage higher. I have seen 7.2 volts from the 6 volt cells in sunshine in UK um, and so just be careful when it says 6 volts it's nominal 6 volts. The Arduino will work down to 4.5 volts, I've used it occasionally at 4.3, it works acceptably but obviously it can't be designed that way. The SIM unit is voltage sensitive, it needs 4.1 volts, a couple of amps uh, for several milliseconds um, after it's been started up. The Arduino is easily reset with a few hundred millivolts dip on its voltage lines so this is going to be carefully um, looked at. The Zena diagram, the Zena diodes in the diagram are not for voltage regulation, they are just for protecting the voltages on the pins of the Arduino and uh, the SIM unit as we do not want to exceed the stated voltages on these items. Shocky diodes are used throughout due to their low forward volt drop being about 300 millivolts. Um, the 5 volt 3 pin regulator has a low dropout also of about 300 millivolts which is works really well, really well. Um, the nickel metal hydride battery has spirally wound construction so its inductive its structure uh, finds it difficult to supply large spikes instantaneously. The relay um, switches not only the unit, the SIM unit on um, in the evening but also turns the solar cells off from charging the battery when the voltages are too high. In this particular case it is not deemed necessary to charge fully charge the batteries as long as they're 60-70% um, that's fine. Uh, we don't want pushing it to 100% there's no need and uh, it's not necessary. Apparently the battery can be trickle charged at a very low rate for months but deep cycling is recommended every few months to maintain the battery condition. Now, whether this happens in the field is unlikely uh, unknown but it should be recommended at this stage. This slide highlights the main uh, voltages required which are 5 volts and 4.1 and the voltages available 0 to 7.2 volts from the 6 volt solar cells and uh, a nominal 4.8 volts from the nickel metal hydride batteries. However I have found that the 4.8 volts from the batteries is normally higher because we're not taking anything appreciable from it. In fact it takes 70 milliamp hours 
uh, during any 24 hour periods. That's made up of 60 milliamp -hour hours during the day and 9 milliamp -hour hours during the night. Um, yeah. The aim here was to trickle charge the nickel metal hydro batteries. Now it is not recommended we do this, but I can't see any other way around it at the moment. Um, the recommended uh, trickle charge rate is about 0 0.05 C. Now we're using four ampere hour batteries, so that equals to 200 milliampere hour, 200 milliamps. However, the solar cells can only give 200 milliamps um, total, that's 100 milliamps each, and that's in bright sunlight. Um, so it's it's doubtful that they'll ever reach their maximum um, trickle charge. Yes, uh, but without six volts, if you went down to 5.5 volts, the battery would never even reach 13 or 15, 20 percent of its total charge. So it has to be targeted at uh, six volt solar cells. Um, the the uh, there's asymptotic charging techniques anyway, so it would never get there if it was 5.5. But the six generally keep it quite well stocked. Right. Okay, there we go. <coughs> Charging at 95 milliamps, and I'm going to charge short that shock key out, which should go up to 120 something. I can't show you because I'm using two hands. Oh, there we are, look at that, 126. <coughs> so 126 with that shock is shorted out. And move it in, 96. So that's 25%. Now this was just a test uh, okay, for removing the That's series shock key diode, just increasing milliamps. the target voltage and by 300 millivolts increases the um, charge current by 30% to 25% somewhere around there, <coughs> as you can see on the screen. Uh, yeah, so but are, even so, it's it's not recommended to go so uh, more than 200 milliamps, and we're approaching and that, so I don't think we should do this. 96. Well, this is just to test the um, a relatively fresh battery. It's maybe a week, two weeks old, in the sharp shadowed sun <coughs> from the old 100 million solar cells, and it's pumping out 130 milliamps, 120 milliamps. Uh, which is twice as much as it was when the sky was cloudy, but there's not a cloud in the sky. Um, so ultraviolet's getting there, so that's where the energy is. All this is so out of all this, the questions are how best to obtain 5 volts of the Duino? and the 4.1 volt 2 amp peak for the SIM texting module. What voltage solar cells are recommended in the, in the light of all the stuff that we know about now? And how will the batteries fare under the proposed trickle charge rate with the target voltage of 6 volts? How will the unit revive after a flat battery event, for example a year or more in the shack or on the shelf, which happens quite a lot. And what is the simplest and cheapest to manufacture solution for small batches of the circuit on the right hand side? And should we use 4.8 volts? Should we go to 7.2? And with all the benefits and drawbacks of that? Or should we go lower voltages and use a uh, boost buck regulator for the whole thing? I don't think we can afford the, the current. It'll be about 18 milliamps, 24 hours a day. But anyway, all this is up for grabs in the power supply and power or voltage considerations of the uh, unit. Thanks a lot for listening.